Thank you very much for the introduction, John. Thank you to everyone for being here. I'm very excited to be part of this event. It's a fabulous event. I've been to it before and I always enjoy being part of this group. And my name is Eric French, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about end of life medical expenses. In terms of this research, some of it has recently been summarized in a handbook chapter uh, that uh, I, we're quite excited about. And we're quite excited about all the different issues that are associated with end of life medical spending. Now, obviously, end of life medical spending brings in much more than just economics. It brings together really important philosophical, moral, spiritual issues. However, we think that economists have a lot to say about end of life care medical spending as well, both in terms of just getting the numbers right, as well as helping us to try and think about how could we do better in terms of organizing care for those who really need it the most. In terms of what I'm going to tell you about today, first of all, I'll tell you uh, some facts about how big of uh, is med medical spending in terms of end of life medical spending relative to total medical spending, both in the United States as well as in other countries. I'll tell you a little bit about its finance and hopefully this can spawn a little bit of a debate about what we can do better as societies to make sure that those most in need are well cared for. The first thing that I'm going to bring up is how big is medical spending in the last 12 months of life as a share of aggregate medical spending. So I don't know if we have a second for this, but it would be fun if people just put into the chat window what share of aggregate medical spending they think uh, uh, comes from those in the last 12 months of life in their own individual country. So if a few people could just throw in a guess, for example, do you think it's more than for example, 30% of total medical spending, or is it less than 30%? Um, I see a few people in there. I'll just give you the answer now. Oh, we're up to four. Okay, so I'll give you the answer. For your country, it's probably about 10%. There's a little bit of cross-country variation in the share of total medical expenditures that go towards those and the last 12 months of life, but for most countries, it's about 10%. Um, the US is not an outlier. So some uh, commentators have speculated that part of the reason why medical spending in the United States is so high relative to other countries is driven due to those in the last 12 months of life. That's really not true. After I show you a couple of facts, I wanna get into these issues in terms of how long-term care and, this, and various types of end-of-life care is funded. So that's where we're going today. I've told you the headline number. Um, for most countries, medical expenditures amongst those in the last 12 months of life constitutes about 10% of aggregate medical expenditures. It's a little bit higher than that in, for example, Denmark and Germany. In the United States, it's actually lower than 10%. So if the United States is an outlier in terms of uh, the share of total medical expenditures going towards those in the last 12 months of life, it's that it's actually a little bit on the low side. The second thing that I want you to take away from this table is that it's important not just to think about end of life care in terms of the final, say, few months. So I think often when we think about end of life care, uh, it's driven a little bit about us watching, for example, uh, TV shows uh, where individuals are in hospitals racking up uh, very large medical bills and us thinking that that's really what end of life medical care is really about. End of life medical care is more about those who have very serious uh, chronic health conditions, often these chronic conditions persist a long time and then eventually uh, individuals die due to these chronic conditions. 
one way to try and think about that is uh, to look at medical spending in the last 12 months of life relative to medical spending, for example, in the last three calendar years of life. What you can see here is that in the last three calendar years of life, uh, end of life medical spending is closer to 20% of aggregate medical spending in most of these countries. Again, if the US is an outlier, it's that uh, relatively little goes to end of life care. Now, the US does spend a lot on aggregate uh, medical care going towards those in the uh, last 12 months of life. So you can see it here. On average, in the United States, amongst those in the last 12 months of life, they wind up spending about $80,000 on uh, care. This is health care that's both paid out of pocket as well as health care provided for by the government and private insurers. Now, there's a few facts that I want you to take away from this graph right here. The first is that the US does spend more than other countries. The US spends more on health care than other countries at all ages. So it's, there's nothing that's specific about end of life care that makes the US unique. The second thing that I want you to take away from this graph is that different countries uh, allocate the resources to different service items. So for example, in the Netherlands, you can see that the Dutch, they spend quite a bit on end of life care. A lot of that end of life care goes towards long-term care. Contrast that relative to Germany, where a relatively small share goes towards long-term care. There, one potential reason for these important differences across countries, and this is something that I'll get to get back to later, is that in the Netherlands, they emphasize a free healthcare system where long-term care is provided free uh, uh, to individuals who meet at least certain medical criteria. Germany, on the other hand, they actually focus in on trying to use families. So they actually subsidize families to provide care for their loved ones. So um, it's an actually a very interesting difference in policy environments, uh, countries that are just right next to one another. I live here in England. So in England, we have very good data on hospital care. We don't have such good data on other types of care but you can see a few other countries right here um, in terms of how much they allocate to end of life medical expenditure. Now, I wanna tell you a little bit about these breakdowns in terms of spending items across different countries and how well that, and how that changes over time. So in particular, I'm going to show you a little bit more about uh, what types of care is money spent on at different points in time and who winds up paying for it. Here again, we have medical expenditures just for the US this time, but we think that for other countries, it's likely to be somewhat similar to the United States. This shows cumulative spending relative to the point of death. So what this is telling us right here, that in the last two months of life, on average in the United States, all different payers out of pocket, the government and other payers spend on average about $30,000 on healthcare. And by that, I mean both more medical care as well as long-term care. Now, if we focus in on the last two months of life, it does sort of uh, almost uh, line up with what we think when we watch TV shows about uh, people receiving uh, large amounts of health care right before death. Most of that care is on hospital spending. However, as we go further back in time, for example, if we focus in on the last 12 months of life, well, a lot of care is on hospital care. That comprises over $30,000. However, in the last 12 months of life, you can see here that long-term care plus home health and hospice type care, more palliative care, caring for individuals just who have very severe uh, 
impairments, that's also about $30,000. So that's what end of life care looks like in the United States. The next thing that I wanna bring up is this issue of how can we ensure individuals against these catastrophic medical needs towards the end of their lives. In the United States, and this is very similar to where I live now in the United Kingdom, in the United States, hospital care is almost fully insured. So there's a program in the United States called Medicare that covers uh, the vast majority of all Americans over age 65. And most people who die in America are over age 65. So for them, uh, hospital care is typically paid for by Medicare. However, long-term care is not so well insured in the United States. That's also true in the United Kingdom. So Andrew Dillnett will be talking after me. And so this is a little bit of a segue into uh, his talk. In both the United States and the United Kingdom, long-term care is largely paid for out of pocket if an individual or a family is of relatively high wealth. So just in terms of what I'll show you next is what these different pairs wind up looking like. Now, in the United States, what you can see is that the big majority of all end of life care uh, is paid for by Medicare. A non-trivial share is paid for by Medicaid. That's uh, a program that pays for, for example, the long-term care of those who are financially indigent. But you can also see that a big chunk of these expenditures are paid for out of pocket. And a lot of those expenditures are going towards those in nursing homes. Now, of course, these are just averages. There's incredible heterogeneity. And this heterogeneity is important when thinking about how should we think about designing insurance schemes to better insure families against uh, issues such as, and health conditions such as dementia. Amongst those with dementia, much more is spent out of pocket because those with dementia need the long-term care. And again, that type of care is poorly insured. So that's what I have to say. Long, uh, end of life care, it's not the key driver of aggregate medical spending, but it is important. It constitutes about 10% of total medical spending in most countries. Um, there's not that much variation in terms of the share of aggregate medical spending that goes towards those in the last 12 months of life, but there is incredible variation across countries in terms of how long-term care is financed. In some countries such as the Netherlands and Denmark, long-term care is provided largely free the family has to meet certain uh, medical criteria in order to, for, for an individual to wind up uh, getting that care, but it's largely free conditional on meeting these medical needs. You won't be surprised to hear that those countries tend to spend a lot on uh, long-term care. Other countries such as Japan focus in on uh, co-insurance where the government pays for a certain cost of long-term care and the family pays for certain costs. Other countries such as the US and United Kingdom focus on this idea of high wealth individuals paying for out of pocket and low end wealth individuals being uh, financed by the state. Um, at some level, that means that the resources go towards those that need it the most, although it does wind up meaning that many households are made financially destitute through a long-term care stay. And then finally, some countries are trying somewhat, I think, innovative approaches like Germany in terms of trying to subsidize families to keep these uh, individuals in their homes. And that's what I have to say. Thank you very much.